Hi friends, welcome to the daily answer writing practice for UPSC mains examination. So here we give two questions every day. As soon as you see the questions, you try to answer them. 10 minutes per question, so 20 minutes for both the questions. And then you can use the CAM scanner, you can scan the answers. And you can mail them to our mail ID mainswithsarath at gmail.com. And my suggestion is, don't write the answers after listening to my answers. Similarly, don't write the answers by browsing and by collecting the points online. Just write them with your existing knowledge. After writing the answers, then you can go, th go through my answers or go through, you know, um, any Google, uh, any websites, etc. Means don't do the Google search before writing your answers. Also, we will be evaluating your answers mostly and uh, we will provide the feedback to you over the email. And priority would be given to those students who write the answers almost regularly and sincerely. And this is a free initiative mainly for your practice to the UPSC mains examination. As we know that uh, almost every topper tells that the secret for his uh, score in the mains is daily answer writing practice. So let us come back and discuss about last video's questions. In the last video I have given two questions. Let us discuss their answers. The first question is regarding the plastic. You pause the video, go through the question. For some 10 seconds okay now like every UPSC question what I have done is I have given a statement a context based on that context the question is analyze the effects of plastic pollution on the marine ecosystem first question this question the answer will carry some seven marks mention some measures to tackle the problem the second question it will carry some seven marks means this is a 15 marks question which you should try to write in around 11 minutes in 250 words this question shall be written now so while writing the answer in the introduction also just like in the question in the answer also you try to build a context try to write four to five lines of the gravity of the plastic problem how the plastic pollution is increasing particularly in the oceans and then you come and address the questions given here so as they are talking about the plastic pollution in the oceans, in the introduction, we would write some background. We would say that in the oceans, the plastic is accumulating. Almost 40% of the ocean surface throughout the world, you know, contains the plastic pollution. And you can write one, uh, some statements that you, that you have read from recent current affairs or any international organization. For example, World Economic, Economic Forum said that by 2050, the overall plastic in the oceans may even exceed the amount of fish in the ocean. Similarly, from last few years in the current affairs, we are regularly seeing about the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, also called as Pacific Trash Vortex. It is happening because the countries on the rim of the Pacific Ocean, we actually draw a map to show this draw a map for just 5 seconds map you can draw the map of Pacific Ocean Pacific Ocean means on the west is Australia the Indonesia the Philippines China South Korea the, you know the Japan or Korea and then here you draw the map of you know, the South American countries Central America North America Alaska you know Greenland and then you say that uh, the Pacific Rim countries are releasing the plastic which is coming and accumulating in the Pacific Ocean for example this is the northern Pacific gyre. Gyre means a circulation created by the ocean currents. All the plastic coming from these countries is attracted, is coming into this uh, Pacific northern central Pacific gyre. And here we are seeing a great garbage patch. That's what I, I mentioned here. But you, should, you no need to write all those points here because the question is not about that. Just you draw a diagram if possible, write two or three, just this three, two to three points or your own points. Okay. You say, that the gravity situation is too high because even the great Pacific garbage patch is forming uh, in the Pacific Ocean. And uh, the question, they did not ask you about the sources of plastic. However, it will be good if you write one point about where the plastic is coming from. The major sources are the fishing industry, the fishing nets, the aquaculture, the industrial waste and all the plastic used in the cities actually come into the ocean because of the storm runoff, urban storm runoff. So, uh, though the question is not asking that, we have to mention these kind of points. We call them as packaging the answer in a better way. So the evaluator, for him it will be easy to flow through the answer. 
Now, let us come to the actual question asked. They asked, uh, what are the effects of plastic pollution on the marine ecosystem? Specifically, they are asking you the effects on the marine ecosystem. Here also, actually, you can draw some creative diagram to show the marine ecosystem and what are the effects on different organisms. For example, you can, you know, draw some part of the ocean, you can draw like this, a part of the ocean. And you can say, you know, the coral reefs, the coral reefs. The coral reefs actually contract diseases, contract diseases because of the plastic pollution. You know, the small fish, the small fish may consume the water that is having the microplastic, microplastic, which would actually affect the digestion system of the fishes. It may lead to death of the fishes. Even the large animals like the dolphins, the dolphins, the sea turtles, turtles, these may be entangled in the fishing nets. The fish net is one of the major plastic pollution coming from the fishing industry. The fish nets entangle the sea turtles and dolphins which may lead to their death. Even the seabirds, even the seabirds that consume the fish may actually be affected because of the plastic in the small fish. In fact, we can draw a diagram of biomagnification. Biomagnification means in the food chain, for example from the water, the water consumed by the zooplanktons, zooplanktons are consumed by the small fish. Small fish is consumed by either the big fish or by this bird, seabird. So the plastic from the water comes into zooplankton, from there it enters into the fish, from there it enters into the seabirds. So in this way the biomagnification can happen. Even bioaccumulation within the same organism, the plastic may keep on accumulating. This can happen. So you can draw one or two diagrams like this. See, your diagram should actually reduce the size of your answer. Diagram means whatever you want to write in lines, you are representing diagram. Draw the diagram only when it creates value to your answer. Don't draw the diagram by thinking that diagram will fetch you marks. No, diagram will not fetch any marks. But if the diagram is creating any value to the answer, if it is making the answer easier for evaluator, only then you should draw the diagram. I call them as creative diagrams. You should try to use them in the answers. Okay. For example, the points I told, uh, the plastic goes into the bodies of marine organisms causing the death, the fishing nets may entangle the dolphins and turtles, even seabirds are affected, corals get the disease, bioaccumulation, even the plastic waste may get incineration, I mean the incinerated plastic waste leads to carbon emissions in the ocean. So these are the main points. However, some students, they may know some other effects of the plastic pollution. That means the question is asking about the effect on marine ecosystem. But some students may have the may have knowledge on the economic effects, social effects of plastic pollution. For those students, I would suggest that if you could not control, you know, expressing your knowledge, just write one or two lines. But don't write more points on those things which are not asked in the question. For example, see, not only ecosystem, even the coastal economy is affected. You can mention, you can just write two points. The coastal fishing industry, the beach cleaning may become expensive. Even the aesthetic value of the beach will reduce because of which the tourism may fall down. Like that you can write some one or two points, but don't spend much time on that. Similarly, the second part of the question is asking, what are the measures to tackle the problem of plastic pollution in the oceans? So, uh, one major point is the the idea of reducing, reusing, recycling. Any resource, not only plastic, any resource, you have to reduce using resource. And whatever resource you already used, try to recycle it and then reuse it. Reuse. So it's also called as circular economy. You can actually draw some flowchart like this to make it easier for evaluator. Similarly, the waste management techniques, if the technology is not there with the countries, other countries, developed countries should help the undeveloped countries in getting technology for better plastic waste management. Even the even the, the, state, the countries, any country in the world should have their own policy or own act or law, a law to regulate the plastic waste. Okay, similarly funding, funding is required to actually uh, treat the plastic, recycle the plastic. Similarly, alternative packaging is very important. Instead of plastic, go for some other way of plastic, uh, packaging which is friendly to the environment. Similarly, in any UPSC answer, there are some buffer points which you can write for almost every answer. 
so you can use those kind of points for example the international cooperation is required different organizations should come together education is required public awareness shall be increased on this issue and even in the school curriculum college curriculum a topic should be included in the better waste management plastic waste management or reduce the use of plastic etc so this kind of buffer points i would say are helpful particularly when you do not know the actual answer anyhow these are very useful finally for every answer you have to conclude using two or three points as i told you earlier so it's better if you showcase your knowledge in the conclusion in the conclusion one thing is you showcase your knowledge on the international acts international policies for example united nations environments global plastic platform is already available uh, to address the situation or countries like india and canada are actually having a, having their own policy they are trying to eliminate the single use plastic the plastic that use only once for example the the um, the plastic containers when you go to kfc they give you some drink in a plastic bottle you just dispose it after using it such kind of single use plastic shall be reduced so this is how you package the answer you write the answer almost every student writes similar points but uh, you can get half mark more one mark more by showcasing some knowledge in the conclusion by packaging with good points in the introduction or some creative diagrams now let's come to the second question that i have given in the previous video just pause the video go through the question okay so the question is about public financial management or fund management both are same public financial management system the question itself told what is a pfms slightly means it it uh, built a context in upsc they will give one statement they explain what is pfms slightly and then they ask you only two questions one question is explain the features of pfms see generally in the question these kind of words shall be observed carefully for example let us say pfms has some 10 features you know 10 features okay if the question is enumerate the features or mention the features then you can just write all the 10 features one line each but here the question is explain the features so if you want try to explain all 10 features it will go beyond two pages which you cannot do so what you have to do is when they ask you to explain the features select four or five important features of pfms explain them whatever they are asking you do that okay the first question seven marks the next question is mention how just mention no need to explain it. just mention how financial management index for rural development programs makes use of pfms see this is important generally students what they do is when they see this financial management index of rural development program they will write whatever they know about it but they are not asking you to write about it they are asking how this index is making use of pfms so that is the point so who your address is that exactly will get marks okay now in the introduction some three or four lines you briefly once again mention mention about um, uh, how what is pfms but don't repeat the things that they gave in the question whatever they gave in the question regarding pfms don't repeat them you write your own points about what pfms is you can say it is a common electronic platform to track the funds completely from the central government level to the local consumer level okay in fact for this kind of questions economy questions it is better if you can draw a beautiful need flow chart for easy understanding to the evaluator for example you can say central government or central government agencies the funds will move funds will move to the state government or the agencies from there it moves to the consumers or sometimes it goes to the panchayat from panchayat it can go to mg nrg or trusts you understand for some time from central government the funds can go to some trusts some organizations some associations some ngos so in this way as you draw the flow chart you are showing that in india the flow of the fund is very complicated through several channels several methods and long chains so in order to track this entire funding digitally as a part of digital india you can say as a part of digital india to track these funds pfms has been started if you know you can write in 2009 it is started but at that time it is only for the plan schemes plan in those days plan schemes non plan schemes are there but now there is no distinction now for almost every scheme we are using the pfms also it helps in the real time monitoring of the flow how the funds are flowing to which scheme it is flowing how much it is flowing how much of it is utilized these things can be understood easily by pfms and because of this kind of monitoring different departments and ministries can take good decisions only when the ministries or departments know how the money is flowing they can take good decision so like that you write half page less than half page of introduction then come to the actual question 
natural question they're asking you to write the features of the PFMS. So you explain at least four or five features. You say that there are many agencies that are implementing the government programs and almost 1 lakh 1.8 lakh agencies were registered in the PFMS because of which central government is easily able to monitor those many agencies. Okay. Similarly, PFMS has got core banking solution as an interface. That means all the agencies which are linked with the PFMS, they can they can you know they can attach their bank accounts, they can link their bank accounts to the PFMS so that all the stakeholders, stakeholders which can be ministers, department, officials, consumers, whoever. The required stakeholders. The stakeholders can monitor the bank accounts of these agencies, how much fund is coming in, going out. So in that way, PF helpful. Then you know the EAT expenditure advance transfer module. It is a very important module of the PFMS. It is useful because it helps the agencies to transfer the amounts to the lower agencies or to do e-payments to the vendors from whom they purchased the items or e-payments as salaries to the employees. So these kind of payments can be done using expenditure advanced transfer module. Similarly, another module is integration of DBT. See, direct benefit transfer has become almost prominent in India. For most of the schemes, government is directly transferring the amount to the end consumer through the DBT. So this DBT is also uh, linked with the PFMS as a module, which is important feature of PFMS. So finally, you can also mention that PFMS presently uh, it is uh, linked with most of the centrally sponsored schemes even central sector schemes also central sector schemes and many expenditure like the financial commission grants etc come under this one okay for example here I am saying if possible if, if time permits you can draw a small diagram like PFMS is linked to you know trust organization central government bodies state government bodies panchayas you know you can write all the organizations that you know then second part of the question. In the question they asked you about the financial management index FMI. Recently the Rural Development Ministry has introduced the FMI with the aim to rank the states. They want to rank different states based on how they are able to manage the funds or using the funds. Actually the parameters used for this ranking are are they preparing proper annual plans the state governments are they using the funds Timely, time utilization of funds. Are they, you know, uh, are, are they doing the internal audit to understand whether the funds are utilized properly? Is social audit conducted by the stakeholders? Different stakeholders, they come and conduct the audit. And even one of the parameters is whether the DBT module is utilized because it's very important. Direct benefit transfer is there in several government schemes. So whether the state government is using this DBT module that is also important and now the question in the question they asked you how fmi is using the pfms right they had mentioned that in fmi one of the important parameter for fmi is how they are using the public financial management system are they using it properly in fact fmi is using pfms because only through pfms transparency of the fund means uh, who is using what kind of fund, how it is flowing can be understood. Accountability, whichever agency is spending the fund for a project or a scheme, they are accountable for how much they are spending. Time bound targets, are they meeting the time bound targets, are they meeting targets in the time, means uh, uh, funding wise. So all these things can be tracked easily by PFMS, hence PFMS plays a big role in uh, ranking the states using FMI, that is a, that is a point. Generally one tip I want to tell you is, if you don't know many points, for example, for this one, if you know only two points, then don't write points, just write paragraphs, two, three paragraphs, you explain it daily. When you have more points, you write in points, each one line, each point, when you have more points. When you have only two points, write paragraphs, you see, that's better, that's better, okay. The overall answer should be a combination of paragraphs and points. Then, always conclude. Uh, in the conclusion, you, you have to use the opportunity of showing all your knowledge outside the question. But that means as you are concluding the answer, you show your other knowledge related to the question which you could not use in the answer. Okay, for example, you can say that cooperative federalism uh, would be easier through this PFMS or FMI because the central government, state government can cooperate easily because the funding will be transparent. Even competitive federalism because of the ranking of the states, the states will compete. 
and then you can say you can um, uh, also say that because of the covid 19 the government is spending more amount than what is allocated for the budget for example if you observe for mg nrga mg nrga originally some 1.2 lakh crores has been given in the budget allocated in the budget but because of covid 40000 crore more has been allocated for the mg nrga for the migrant workers, many migrant workers who are trapped in different places because of the COVID, they are not finding any kind of work. So even they should get wages through MG and RGA. So now the point is because of COVID-19, government is spending more amount than what is mentioned in the budget. And in these times, PFMS is more important because PFMS will track all the funding, how it is going through. So you are linking the question to the COVID also indirectly and you are trying to use the current affairs knowledge in the question. That is important. Actually, this kind of uh, conclusions will fetch some one mark more. One mark is almost every question is like 20 marks more. Even half mark is uh, big enough to change the rank. Okay. Then friends, for tomorrow, I am giving these two questions. You can pause it here. You can pause it here. And then note down the questions. And then start writing the questions. Take 20 minutes. Finish both the questions. And then you mail it to mainsvisaret at gmail.com. Thank you friends.